This Family Life News Podcast is made possible by the support of listeners like you. This is Family Life Hometowns, a chance to get to know the stories behind the cities, towns, villages, and burgs that make up the Family Life listening area. We take a look at their history and learn what makes them special. Today, we spotlight Lewiston, New York. Located along the east bank of the Niagara River, Lewiston lies just north of Niagara Falls. And the way geologists tell it, those world-famous falls actually got their start at Lewiston before erosion brought them south to their current home. Tom Collister is museum curator for the Historical Association of Lewiston. He says settlements in the area go back thousands of years, but he picks up the tale for us in the 1600s. The last major group of Indians to be in Lewiston was the Senecas, who were carrying packs for fur traders, etc. And that's when the French came in around 1678. When LaSalle was looking for a place to build his boat, he sent Father Hennepin and a group of people up the Niagara River. They came up through the gully and found the Senecas moving all the fur trade goods and realized that if they could have a storehouse here, they could pretty much control all the fur trade throughout the Great Lakes right through the Lewiston area. Collister says the French started a wave of migration into the central U.S., followed by the British, who built the first railway in North America in the Niagara Gorge. Of course, friction between the Brits, the Yanks, and Native Americans eventually led to the War of 1812. Ground Zero, Lewiston. Supposedly, the first major battle of the War of 1812 was here in Lewiston. About 5,000 regular army and militias from around New York State and I think parts of Pennsylvania perhaps came up here to Lewiston to invade Queenston and work from Queenston down to Niagara-on-the-Lake under the cover of darkness through the gully, went over to Canada, climbed up the side of the escarpment and then attacked the British from above and were winning the battle, capturing Queenston. While that victory turned out to be short-lived, Lewiston's prominence hasn't been. Another major chapter in Lewiston history involves its role in the Underground Railroad. We had a lot of ways for them to escape here. We had abolitionists here, we had a station master here, and we moved slaves through Lewiston. We had the suspension bridge they could cross on, we had rowboats that they could cross on, We have a story of a man stealing a barn door and trying to uh, row himself across on that. The river is slow enough down here where someone could actually swim across if they had to. Fast forward to the 1950s and Lewiston became known for something that remains a prominent feature today, the Robert Moses Niagara Power Plant. Most people know the Shelkoff power plant fell into the Niagara River, and that was a major power producer, and New York State had to do something quickly to get power back to the cities down east, so they hired Robert Moses, and he came here, and he, through eminent domain, ripped up the whole uh, southern Lewiston area to build the power plant. They took all the spoils from that power plant and filled in the back portion of Lewiston, which had been a big bowl below the escarpment, and it's what you see today as Art Park. The power project was created in a 24-7 effort in just over three years, a project in which 20 workers died. While there's no denying that urban planner Robert Moses was a maven, he was also a divisive figure to many. I'm sure that the people of Lewiston and many people in Niagara Falls were not happy with how he just came in like a whirlwind and took things and destroyed things. He destroyed a lot of our historical areas over there in the Art Park area. I'm sure he did the same in uh, Niagara Falls. They moved something like 78 homes and churches from their original areas and changed the whole lay of the land. When it was over, there was a lot of promises made of things being rebuilt, money to be pumped into the area and stuff. Doesn't seem to have uh, really happened. Despite those historic losses in the name of power and progress, Collister says residents then banded together to preserve what remained. The result being that a visit to the Lewiston of today will still treat visitors to a wealth of historic architecture, along with one of western New York's most picturesque riverbank vistas. We still try to keep the small town atmosphere here. 
and we continually try to keep the historical upkeep of all our buildings and our homes that are on the uh, local register that we have. And I think everybody in this area realizes what's going on with the Frontier House now being uh, restored. It's on the National Register, and hopefully it'll be open in a couple uh, years. That's the place you recognize. Our yep. waterfront is beautiful, too. We have the monument to the Freedom Crossing people, and we have the monument to the Tuscaroras who saved all of the Lewiston citizens during the uh, burning of Lewiston in 1813. The Lewiston Museum is located in a former church on Plain Street dating back to 1835. You've been listening to Family Life Hometowns, a look at the cities, towns, villages, and burgs that make up the Family Life listening area. Please join us again next time for another edition of Family Life Hometowns. Thank you for listening to this Family Life News Podcast. If you've been encouraged by what you've heard, please share it with others and click the subscribe button to automatically receive future episodes. Family Life is a listener-supported ministry. Podcasts like this are made possible by your financial partnership. Find out more at familylife.org.